All right. All right. Well, this afternoon we have a treat. One of my favorite people. I've got to work with her. What was it, Stephanie? Over almost two years, right? I think so. Yeah, maybe even a little longer. Yeah. Yeah. Ste Stephanie Reimer. She's a really talented artist. And she had a very uh, unique journey uh, for me. She came into the coaching program two years ago, a little more now probably, and uh, and wanted to learn figure drawing as, as the one of people coming in there. And it evolved into something very personal and very interesting and frankly, very beautiful. So I wanted to share that because we can all use inspiration. We all want to get better. And oftentimes we're a little narrow in how we do, we think of things. We think it's one thing and if we're open to it, it could become something else. So I'm going to let Stephanie take over here and, uh, and maybe walk us through that journey. And then we'll talk afterwards a little bit about that. So you go ahead, Stephanie. And okay, by yeah. the way, I didn't say it. I don't think, thank you for being here. It's a, it's a lovely. Thank you for having me. It's really a big honor. And thank you for to those who are joining in. I'm excited to to chat with you. Um, yeah, so as Steve mentioned, I'm an artist and my path to art was kind of a winding one. So I didn't I didn't actually study art in university, um, but I always loved drawing as a kid. It was something that I did all the time, anytime I could. And high school was really a turning point for me because of a teacher that I had. And I loved drawing, but I also had other interests like music and sports and math and science. And here was this teacher who also had these other interests. And even though he was an art teacher, he was also my coach and he played music and he had a science background and it really kind of opened my eyes to kind of what was possible. And I remember grade 11 in particular, because that was the year we learned about the Renaissance period in our class. And I was just so mesmerized by these artists that had these multidisciplinary passions and they weren't just making art. They were also, you know, studying botany and all these different sciences. And I just thought it was amazing. So that kind of really informed my decision to study biomedical engineering because it was sort of a way for me to make sense of all the interests that I had, because I really did love running. That was kind of my main sport. And I thought it was a really lovely fit with studying biomedical engineering and kind of learning about the body and, and the anatomy and things. So yeah, that's what I did. I did a four-year program and I really loved it. And then about a year after I graduated, I was working full-time at a medical device company. And that year I kind of felt kind of sad that I wasn't drawing very much anymore. I kind of let my art go a little bit. And even though there was a lot of creativity in what I was doing because I was designing medical devices, it wasn't so much like I didn't have that creative freedom that I had when I was drawing because there's certain standards that I kind of had to adhere to. And so I was really missing that. Um, yeah. And that's kind of when I took charge of, of my art again. And I, I found this, this art course in the summer and it was really the first official art class I'd taken, you know, apart from, from studying in high school, I kind of was sort of self-taught. And so this was really fun for me to actually have a teacher and, and teach me how to draw. Um, and it was only like a four week course, but I really enjoyed it. And it sort of kickstarted that whole kind of re reigniting my passion. Um, oh, I have a couple slides to share. So let me, let me maybe share that to kind of give a little context. Yeah. Um, so I'll share this. And yeah, so my early inspiration was really kind of anatomy and I really enjoyed looking at other anatomy sketches. And so I kind of just tried to mimic those. And this was grade 11 for me. It's Stephanie, I'm sorry to interrupt. Let me, yeah. um, let me stop just a second. I want to make sure they are seeing what I'm seeing. Oh, okay. I should have checked that before we started and I didn't think of it. No problem. Let's see here. Yeah, they are. Looks like. Okay, perfect. Hold on just a second. Let me double check that. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to get back into our full screen. Okay, great. Sorry okay. about that. That's okay. I don't see you, though. I don't know if... Yeah, that's okay. Okay. Uh, okay they're perfect. seeing you instead. Okay. 
So yeah, I really was into portraits as well. So this was kind of me drawing a lot before university. And then there was kind of this block of time where I wasn't drawing. And so this phase of rediscovering art after I'd taken that summer course, this was kind of the beginnings of that and really getting into more different types of media because in high school, I really loved just, just pencil drawing and graphite. And I really got into that. And here I was sort of playing with color and pencil crayons. And um, yeah, then I, from there, I kind of really got into digital art. I, there was a bunch of artists that I really looked up to that kind of had more of a illustrative cartoony style. And I really wanted to kind of learn how to draw in that style because kind of a major roadblock for me is that I couldn't really draw from imagination. And that was sort of a kind of a mental block for me because I thought that I wasn't an artist because I couldn't do that. And um, so exploring digital was sort of a way to be able to stylize things and not rely so heavily on references. And yeah, I'll stop sharing for a second, but yeah, that was really fun for me to just play and to really try to find a different style. And something else that kind of was another roadblock for me while doing this is that um, I couldn't really match the digital cartoony style with the more realistic style that I had with traditional media. So that was, those were two of the main goals, drawing from imagination and developing a style when I found your program. Um, which kind of like leads me into the next phase. And so, yeah, as I was getting more into art, I also realized I want to make a career out of this. I want my career to be more creative. And so that's when I found user experience design. So designing apps and software and websites. And so I took a, a course in that and I got a certification and I started pitching projects at work so that I could start to kind of build a portfolio. And luckily I had a really supportive boss who kind of let me go along with this. And then the pandemic hit. And then all of a sudden, you know, the company was restructuring and this is my opportunity to kind of really take UX full time and find another career. So at that same time, that's when I found you, Steve, is I was kind of reminiscing over high school and kind of that feeling of being so inspired to just draw all the time and really thinking about my teacher who had a really big impact on me. And somehow I came across an interview with you and Stan Prokopenko on YouTube. And I was so kind of taken aback by the similarities between you and this teacher that I had. And I just thought I gotta find a way to have Steve be my teacher. And I had no idea, this was way before I even found your, your Draws From Life program. And then, I think I had come across your your free live stream and you had said, you know, I've just started this program. If you're interested, type interested. And then I had a call with you and that was that was amazing. And that call really helped me because at the time I was going on interviews for user experience jobs. And I feel that that call you and I had gave me a bunch of confidence to call myself an artist and to say, no, I am a creative person and I can do this. And so I did get a UX job and then I found myself having a lot more time because I was working remotely and I wasn't looking for a job anymore. And that really allowed me, allowed me to sort of invest in your program. And I got so much out of it, um, which I can dive more into later, but yeah, it, it was a really fantastic experience for me and just gaining so much confidence because Prior to that part of my life, I really didn't feel like I was an artist, even though I loved to draw. And, you know, in high school, a lot of my peers kind of thought I was going into art, but I didn't feel like I was good enough because I couldn't draw from imagination and I felt like I didn't really have a style. And so your program, I feel, really helped me with that and just having that community support and those calls where we really focused in on those things I needed to focus on. It was so helpful. Um, and then I'll, I'll share my screen again because I have a couple more things to talk about. Can I ask you a question while you're doing that? Yeah. It, it seems to me, uh, the thing that steps stands out for me anyway, is that as you went from you know, leg and leg, of another leg of the journey here, you mm -hmm. acted really quickly. Once you made a decision, boom, is that true? 
Yeah, I think that's pretty true. And I've noticed in, in my own life, as soon as I get really clear on a goal, it's sort of like that red car effect mentality where when you're really clear, you want something, you suddenly kind of start to see these opportunities kind of come up. And I really felt that way when I came across you because I had a lot of time to kind of reflect on my career and I really knew I wanted an art mentor. And I think that just being so clear on that goal, I was able to notice that opportunity come across. And maybe if I hadn't made that decision internally first, I may have saw that interview and not thought anything of it. But I think just having that clarity was really important for me. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's actually one of the uh, the qualities of people who who do succeed, do have the best chance for succeeding is they make a decision, even if it's going to be imperfect as decisions will be, but they act quickly. And then they get information from that action. And then they can adjust their their decision, tweak it wholesale, change it as you did over and over again. But without that quick action that you had, then that doesn't lead you to new insight and the next step. And so it's, it's lovely to hear you talk about this because it's just this rolling, uh, these just these waves of rolling forward towards what you want even as you weren't quite sure what it was, you knew it was creative, you knew it was artistic, but exactly how that manifested, it it needed to work through those fits and starts. Uh, it was wonderful to hear that, Stephanie. Mm, yeah, thank you. Yeah, and so kind of coming back to your course, um, something else that you taught me was kind of this power of iterations. And um, this is a big theme that you talk about. And at the beginning, I didn't really, I'll be honest, I didn't understand it fully. And um, I was sort of just iterating these different shapes kind of for the sake of it. And then as I started going through the course, I sort of realized how powerful it is and just kind of thinking about iterations in a broader sense, even in my career, like iterating my career and just having somewhere to start from is better than not having anything at all. And so having that first iteration is so important because then you can continue to kind of build off of there. Um, and so, yeah, for that lesson, I'm just, I'm so thankful for that because I think it is super powerful. Um, and it's definitely been kind of a theme throughout my career. Well, and you being one of the early adopters, I was iterating the course of that program. I, I knew what I wanted, but I didn't know quite how to, manifested and iterations was one of those ideas that actually when I came up with it, I didn't realize how powerful it was, but very quickly practicing on, on you and the others, I realized both what it could be and how it wasn't fully clear at the same time. And I was able to refine the ideas with that. And so um, I'm glad that that struck with you because I think it's a, it is a powerful tool. If it's, and it's to build the craft, but also that's part of what helped you find your own voice, right? Yeah, absolutely. It really did. Um, and kind of building off of that idea, this art as an outlet. Um, in the middle of me kind of working this user experience job, I worked with a lot of startups and, you know, some of them were kind of challenging because you have to kind of wear a lot of different hats and there's a lot of responsibilities that come with that. And I was in this sort of state where I was feeling a lot of pressure. And I, I remember speaking to a mentor and she said, why don't you just channel all of those emotions you're feeling into a drawing a day, do a face a day representing kind of these emotions that you're feeling. And so that's what I did. I'm not, I didn't show oh. all 30 of them. <laughs> that's but I love that. Yeah, and it, it really kind of made light of the situation because there were days that were really difficult. And even though this was a period of time where there was so much joy in my life in other ways, this was the season where I got engaged and there was so much excitement. There's also this feeling of, oh, wow, my job is feels really hard right now. And it is really hard for me to kind of hold those two emotions of like being so joyful and excited exciting to marry my best friend but then also having this like really difficult work environment and so these faces really helped me through that and 
talking about iterations, like this is kind of where I discovered this like sketchy line style, because prior to this point, I had sort of been trying out a bunch of different things, but I hadn't quite done it in this way. And I loved drawing these because they're so quick to do. Like, I think I finished each sketch in maybe like 15 or 20 minutes. And then I kind of played around with the color. Beautiful. And that was really fun. Um, yeah, and that kind of fed into me finding another style of like really getting into, you know, talking about weddings. And when I was engaged, that was a big source of inspiration for me. And um, I remember Steve, you and I had a conversation and you had just kind of encouraged me and you said, you know what, take this season as a time to kind of channel your art into your wedding. And that's what I did. And to me, it was sort of like a big design project with, you know, the fashion and the florals and the stationery. And that's really where I kind of rediscovered my love for stationery because growing up, I loved making cards for people. And, you know, this was a time where I could actually kind of channel that into something tangible. And that was really exciting for me. Um, yeah. And that's, and that's what I'm doing now. So I was able to kind of take the leap and leave that full-time UX job that I talked about. And now I get to kind of design wedding stationery full-time and it's really, really special to be able to do that. That's gorgeous. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. So, um, from sharing. figure drawing to, to this, yeah, so explain that leap. Did the figure drawing help the design? Did it was it just a stepping stone to get beyond? or I think it really was a, a big help because the shape design that you talked about when constructing the figure really kind of unlocked drawing from imagination for me. And it's still something that, I, you know, I'm not super gifted in this area, but I feel a lot more comfortable kind of thinking of things and drawing things without relying so heavily on a reference. And I think the idea of shape design really helped with that because I kind of learned how to put together shapes in a way that I like, in a way that makes sense for me to understand the figure. And of course, you have really strong ways of, of doing that in the way that you teach in your course that have really helped me. And so yeah, and I, and I also feel, you know, with the figure drawing, it kind of fed into this newer passion of mine, which is ballet, starting ballet. And um, it has become such a kind of big part of my life now. And I've only started it, you know, six or seven months ago, but I kind of see it as all connected because it's, you know, the athletic part that I love, but also this artistry. And, you know, even just the way you move your wrists and your fingers can tell a completely different story. And I see a lot of parallels to that with, you know, what you teach in your course. And looking back at, at some of your lessons, I'm thinking, wow, you you already knew all of this stuff and you already talked about it. Uh, like so much of your course is drawing parallels between the different art forms. And, you know, the more I reflect on your course, the more I'm like, wow, that was really powerful, that concept. And that's one of those concepts is just your ability to kind of make connections between not only different art forms, but just like different things in life. So, yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you. Um, uh, but uh, about your your design business, uh, mm -hmm. I'd love you to tell us a little bit more because you're not just doing stationary, are you? Tell us how that how your creativity just wouldn't feel for went from figurative work to these beautiful designs for weddings, but, but your creative vision of this is much bigger than that. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, you know, the figure drawing really informed that style that I was able to develop, um, which kind of came out the different challenges that I set for myself, like the, the 30 days of faces. And that kind of helped with the illustrative illustration side. Um, so that's part of the stationery is having kind of florals or venue illustrations. And then kind of my background in UX design, I was able to design a website and my husband, it's a business with my husband and I, and so he's a developer. And so he's was able to really bring that to life online and bring those designs into code. And it's really fun to be able to work together on this because, you know, it's it's a wedding business and being able to work with your partner is really beautiful in that way. Um, and so, yeah, having having the ability to kind of design a website too, 
really kind of scratched that itch for me because I still do love UX design and digital design. And then of course the kind of physical aspect of the stationery is something I've longed for a long time. And I realized I was really missing that with UX because, you know, designing apps and software, there's not a lot of physical physicality to it. Um, so having a piece of paper in my hand and seeing the design on it is really special for me. Um, yeah, and then hopefully, you know, one day we can roll out more things and have, you know, even more digital side to the business as well. But that's great. That's great. And I think if I'm not mistaken, you have a vision of creating a, a full experience for them uh, for their wedding to make that day the, the special day uh, beyond just the invitations and place cards and things. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, right now it's sort of the invitation suite that you talked about and save the dates, but then all the stationery that happens on your wedding day, like menus and programs and name cards. And then even beyond that, like your thank you cards and just really having that continuity in the design and kind of having your stationery tell a story, ha having it kind of tell who you are as a couple and what makes your love story special and you can keep that forever. Like you can look at that invitation and go, oh, wow, yeah, I remember our wedding and I remember this. And it's just one of those special tangible things that you can create like a memory palace with. And yeah, I think that's what's so special about those tangible things. That's great. That's great. And when did you launch? Officially just earlier this year. Wow. So it's it's still very, very new. And, you know, we're still iterating the website and, and yeah. the designs are, you know, going to have a big improvement very soon but yeah, yeah. that's part of it yeah mm -hmm. that's great but it's that uh that jumping in quick and even and I know it, it may not seem quick at times to you but look at watching you and getting a little bit of updates on the story how you've moved from where we met to here and now you've moved quickly once you decided you've moved quickly into building that business and there's a lot of moving parts to that a lot of creative decisions to make and then launching the business and then iterating on that. It, it never, never really ends that improvement, but also again, that quick action, you jump right in rather than trying to make the business absolutely perfect. What, what was your thinking about that? You, you, you ju jumped in thinking what? <laughs> Yeah, I definitely, I still fall into that trap of, of wanting to make it perfect or just so. And it took us a while to get the business going, but having a hard, we just set this hard deadline for ourselves. And at the time it was in September, because that was kind of like our soft launch of just the iteration one of the website. And so we put the date on the calendar and we said, no matter what, we're making this website live. I don't care what happens, it's going live. And so when there's nobody else to kind of hold you accountable, it's really easy to be, to just say to yourself, oh yeah, I'll just push it back a little bit. But having that hard deadline really pushed us. And so that summer, cause we got married in May of last year. And then that summer we just worked on it all summer. Mm -hmm. And then September we were able to launch it. And yeah, over Christmas was another season of like, let's just keep working on it. Let's see where we can take this and send, and then, um, the beginning of this year, we were able to kind of push the new website live and now it's being updated again. So that's, amazing. yeah, I don't know if I answered your you question. Did. You did. But... It was kind of a leading question there in a little bit, because it's mm -hmm. a, that, that kind of action, it's, it's what really, it's what the best in the world, do, what hyper successful people do is they get an idea and they act quick and they the idea they get as good as they can in a reasonable amount of time without belaboring it for years, researching that novel for years. They put it out there because they know as soon as they put it out there, they'll get information and then they can make it better then. Without that information, it will never be as good as it could be. And what you think it should be without that feedback of actually seeing the website feeling what it is to launch, starting to talk to clients and potential clients. Now you've got more information. You can make wiser choices about what that business should be, what those designs should be. 
how to uh, create a customer experience around that. And then you can adjust your steps and then you act again. And it's that throughout your story here, that fast action, that's the recipe for success is you, most of us wait and say, boy, someday, and we plan and wait. And I've seen it over and over. I used to see it in my art teachers. They would, uh, at school, when I was a student, they would get sabbaticals every once in a while. And they'd be told a couple semesters ahead, okay, you get this semester off, we'll pay you, do whatever you want. And I'd hear them talk about dreaming for two semesters, as they had for years before that, what they would do when they had the time in their studio. They'd come back from almost to a person, come back from that semester off, and they wouldn't have done anything. They'd mm -hmm. clean their studio or garden instead because they build up the dream so big and waited so long to act on it that when they actually acted, they realized reality was very different than the dream. What they thought that painting or that painting series was going to be changed immediately as soon as they started painting, and they didn't know what to do with that. And so they, it pushed them away from their dream. But if you do the best you can in a reasonably short amount of time and then act, then you react to the reality and then you adjust and act again. And it's that leveling up, leveling up uh, constantly. So that's, it's amazing. Uh, it's, it's lovely. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And I have to credit you because I know we had a couple calls where I said, you know, there's all these ideas, how do I streamline it? And so you really said, you know, focus on one thing at a time. And that's really what we did. And I think that's really important because it's so easy to get caught up in, you know, these ideas, which are great. Um, but having a focus has been really helpful for me. I'm glad. I'm glad. Well, it's a, for a lot of people, for me, I just had to do one thing, draw the figure, because I wasn't very good at anything else. And I just focused and hyper-focused on that. But at some point, I noticed that you were good in a lot of areas and were good at multitasking those areas, which most people aren't. And I remember we had a conversation about how, you know, let's just bring some of those, not just this one thing, bring all those loves together in some way. And you jumped right on that. And I think, uh, I forget, it was a couple months later, a few weeks later, we had another call and you're already up and going mm -hmm. with the concept. So yeah. exciting. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. So what's next? Obviously, are you going to keep plugging away with the business? But how do you see that? Do you have a five-year plan or what? What? what's your, or is it just now's enough? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, sometimes I feel that I do have a, a long-term plan and vision, but sometimes I feel like I don't even know. I just need to get through today and yeah. figure that out. Um, but in terms of the business side, it'd be lovely to kind of expand out. And right now we're just printing digitally, um, you know, with ink, but I would love to be able to use letterpress. And so that's kind of a big piece of what I'm working on now and making those connections and, being able to roll that out because I think letterpress is so special. And you and I talked about this before, yeah. but it's that whole idea of that tangible feeling the impressions of the paper and it's just, it's beautiful. And so I would love to be able to really expand that out and learn the craft, learn how to operate it. And so I feel right now it's just gaining those skills, but also not letting it kind of hinder my path and and not get distracted by all of those skills that I want to build. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I'm still trying to find that balance of, you know, keeping the business going and doing the marketing things and all those things that are important, but then also investing in those skills that I want to learn too. Yeah. Finding that balance. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, thank you. I'm checking the clock here. We're not out of time, but anything else you want to share with us before we, we thank you and sign off? Um, well, I think one other theme that I didn't really have a chance to touch on explicitly is just mentors. And you have been such a big part of my journey. So thank you. Oh, wow. And um, even if, like to anybody watching, even if you have a mentor that you don't necessarily know personally or get to talk to just you know finding somebody on a podcast or on a youtube channel there are people in my life that way that i have that have been so influential but 
um, yeah, I'm just, I'm feeling so grateful and, and honored that you have been more than that for me. And so thank you so much, Steve. Oh, that's sweet, Stephanie. Thank you. And it's a, it's just one of the joys of my life to get to work with you and others like you. It's just, uh, it's, uh, artists are pretty good folk. It's, it's, it's fun <laughs> to hang out together, isn't it? Yeah, it is fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah. great. Well, thank you so much for sharing this. I really appreciate it because um, I know how busy you are. So, and it's always great to see you again, of course, too. That was lovely. So thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, maybe, maybe in a year or so, we do it again and see how things are going. Oh, that'd be wonderful. And and thank you again for having me. It's been such an honor. Oh, my pleasure. Well, folks, that was Stephanie Reimer. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's I, th I think it's just an amazing story, Stephanie. Just, uh, wow, just great. So made my day. I hope it made yours. And we will see you all next week. Thanks, Stephanie. Thank you. Bye. Bye.